Sierra Kick, are you ready? Because I'm ready. Never been readier in my whole entire life. Is that the name of going to be your, the name of your biography? Mm-hmm. Never been readier, Sierra Cake. Heart wrenching documentary. Just you, you'll leave my name out of it, right? You have a whole chapter to yourself. Oh. <laughs> they share their lives on YouTube, and now even more. It's Marconi and Sierra, the Me Plus Cake Podcast. Well, here we are with another Me Plus Cake podcast. What What did you think? We've forgotten about you? No. Ah, nope. Pretty excited because next week is just the scary stories. I love Halloween. Yeah, we we both do. It's weird because I've always had an affection for Halloween. And um, most of the people that I've ever, you know, been with, uh, maybe relationships or whatever, have kind of not really been that into it. Me either. Everybody. I'm yeah. always way more into it than anybody else that I know. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think, too, like when you are with someone that has enthusiasm for something, you take what enthusiasm you already have and it makes it bigger because you it's more fun. Yeah. Like like watching horror movies. Like we literally that's pretty much all we do now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's pretty sad. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I think it's awesome. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> so, uh we're pretty excited because Halloween's coming next week like I said is our Halloween special podcast. If you have Halloween stories, Tell them what to do, Sierra Cake. You just send us a voice memo, or you can leave us a voicemail on either of our pages and at com. also, or you can email them in text. It really doesn't matter to us. Yeah, so uh, get them to us soon. I guess our friend Jessica has sent us one. I haven't listened to it yet because I want to be like surprised when I'm putting together the podcast. So. I'm excited. I'm glad that she's participating. Yeah, and she's English, and she has cats like we do. She has a cat. A cat. Yeah. She'll, we, she'll get more. We met her on Vine, remember? Because I, I started watching her Vines, and then... Oh, she's got the squish face cat. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very cute. Speaking of cats, like, I have had... How long have I had cats now? Since, I think, 1998? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I got my cat, Wilhelmina, when she was two from um, a, a vet clinic who one of the vet techs there couldn't keep her anymore. And so I adopted her ever since we've been in love. Yep. And, of course, I have little Tiny, who was just a baby when I got her. She was like, so she's like, what, two years younger than Wilhelmina? That's, Wilhelmina's like 15 or almost 16. Yeah, 13 and 15, I think. Yeah, so Wilhelmina's really old. And just in the last year, maybe two years, She's kind of been showing her age a lot, and it's sad because I've never, like, when I was a kid, I had uh, dogs and stuff, like, but my dog, <laughs> I don't want to embarrass my family, but <laughs> I don't know why. My family would go, oh, you're not paying enough attention to this dog, like, you know, you're a kid, um, so we're just going to give it away. Yeah. And we give it to, like, a friend of the family, but... That's weird. Yeah, like, I always thought that... And, and you know, this is the thing about parents. They, my mom is such a different person than she was. Because, I mean, my mom had me when she was 17. Yeah. So, there are bound to be places in your life where you grow up, you know? Mm-hmm. Changes so, and... And my mom is pretty mature. She's always been pretty... Serious. Once again, Sierra Cake, she has a robe when we do this podcast, and... I'm not trying to be like adult <laughs> content or anything, but you just strip down your robe in the middle I'm of me so talking. It's so hot. We're drinking coffees and I'm just like toasting up right now. <laughs> but don't you know it might be a little distracting? <laughs> don't look. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not going to be. I'm a guy. Come on. <laughs> Sorry. I'll never get naked again. Uh, how dare you? Never I'm again. just going to say, how are we going to do a video podcast? <laughs> I will wear very skimpy clothing. Oh, oh, oh! I was gonna say uh, like a coat and like seven layers or something. No, I'll be, I'll melt. <laughs> we'll do it out. We'll do it outside in like zero degree weather. Oh God, no. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying again? We're talking so- about family pets, and I was just gonna throw this in there. I have had 
Uh, my mom got me a cat many, many, many years ago, and she's actually 19. She turned 19 in September. Wow. And her and Wilhelmina are actually very, like, small and are kind of like the same. Frail and frail. kind of old lady kind of. And yeah. very meowy. And my cat never knew how to meow when I was growing up, so it was always just kind of like a squawk. Yeah. But I remember asking my dad for many years if I could get a dog, and it was no. Like, he didn't like animals, especially cats, because of all the hair. He hates all the pet hair everywhere. And then one day when I was 17, I just came home with Bijou, and he fell in love with her. Like, he adores that dog. Like, I swear that he loves her more than he loves his own children. But, um, so, like... I waited for a long time in order to get a pet, but I, by that age, I was, like, responsible enough to take care of her on my own. But, I mean, my family helped out a lot because they loved her, so. I remember my grandmother having a dog, and she got a tumor and passed away, and it was, like, a whole sad thing. And so I've had, like, a few experiences, you know, and I've known people who, and I've known animals that passed away, but I've never, like, gone through the whole thing, like, with my own pets as an adult. So, you know, as my cat, you know, she could go for five to ten more years. Who knows? Like, I don't know. You know, the average expectancy is, what, 20 years? Yeah, roughly. Between 15 and 20, usually. And so, I don't know. Like, you know, I feel pretty lucky to have have had her for a long time. It's it's really hard because I was like, I was taking a shower and I had Wilhelmina in the bathroom tonight. Just kind of like, so she could be in the room with me and stuff. And I'm like... Oh my God, this cat has been with me through, through so much. We, we lived in Portland, Seattle, Oklahoma. We moved back to Portland, Denver. You know, like we've been everywhere together. So it's like really crazy to think like, wow, I was like 25 when I got this cat. Yeah. She's a well-journeyed little girl. Yeah. So I don't know. You you travel with some uh, an animal, and they are in your life for so long. You just never think of life without them. Yeah. And so many people have to go through this. It's not like it's a new thing in the world or anything like mm-hmm. that. But for me, it is. I've never had this happen before, so it's really sad. And you know, who knows? I mean, she like she could just not be feeling well the last couple of days or something, and maybe she'll get better. Yeah. She could have her ninth wind, as they say. <laughs> yeah, they do have nine lives, right? They do. Oh, well, so who knows? But uh, that's what's going on with uh, the pet situation. Uh, but Bijou, Nala, and Little Tiny are just fine. They are. <laughs> They're bitchy and rambunctious and fun and silly as usual. Yeah, and we've been having like a weird thing with uh, Sierra's cat, Nala, who I love. I think she's adorable. She's like, what, one and a half? Yep. And she moved here from Canada with Sierra. Then she moved three months later into this apartment with two cats. And she's never been around other cats except for when she was a little baby. Yeah. So uh, she's kind of freaking out still. Like She is. She's. I feel like she's still adjusting. And But the thing is, is she keeps hissing at you. And there seems to be no, like prediction of why she does it or and i feel real bad because i know that she doesn't mean it and i mean there's not much we can do to make her stop because we can't get mad at her for it's it's weird because your human reaction is you like you don't want to take it personally but when like i literally get up every morning i get i get up pretty early and i pick up nala and i talk to her and i say good morning and i give her you know like a little squeeze and then i go feed her because she's the cat. She really is on like a feeding schedule. Like oh, she, she loves her food. <laughs> she wants to be fed like immediately as soon as I get up. And so when she hisses at me, I kind of go, what What's the, the deal? Yeah. Like there's no reason. And she still hisses at um, your cats here and there every once yeah, in a while. Weird. But I mean, I think it's hard on her too because she's been thrown into all these different houses recently yeah. and then the cats and stuff and... I mean, I don't like it either, and I don't want her to be mean to you because that's not okay, but I don't... I guess we just got to wait it out a couple more months and yeah, see. Yeah, what are we going to do? I mean, I kind of look at it like... Uh, th- I know this happens to a lot of people, too, yeah. like when they combine uh, houses or when a, a new person is introduced into a cat's life at a certain age. They don't... Cats hate change, so... And cats... I And it's weird because a couple of my friends, my like male friends, have friends who have cats 
and they don't like the guys when they come over to the girls' houses, I guess. So, and my mom was telling me that when her and my stepdad moved in together, my cat that I was just talking about hissed at him for like six months, and <laughs> now they're best friends. Like they yeah. love each other, but so I think it's just some adjusting. But it's really frustrating because yeah, it's just so unpredictable. But well, and I think too is like you know uh, you, you got to think of it like she's a year and a half old. She doesn't know herself. She doesn't know this stuff and it's all these things are changing and it's so and she's being like disciplined more by you because she listens to you more than me because i don't have a very scary voice yeah, but so i think weird. that it's just like a teenage attitude kind of thing i feel like and like you know when there's like a step parent that's come in so that's what i think you're not my real dad yeah you can't tell me what to do this has been cat talk on the me plus cake podcast <laughs> I was really excited to take Sierra to one of my favorite bands from Portland. Portland, Portland, Portland. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, I didn't. I for, kind of forgot when I was getting the tickets. You haven't been to a lot of concerts. Nope, I've been to Britney Spears when I was like six. No, not that young, but young. And then Destiny's Child and the Moffats. So you've seen Beyonce. I have seen Beyonce, yes. Wow. I know. It was a really good concert. I don't know who the Moffats are. Is that like a Jim Henson act or something? It's... They put on wigs and run around? No, they all had like long... Like they were like really into the grunge thing in the 90s. Sort of like Hanson but with grunge? Yeah. That, it was like the Hansons, but there was more of them. Oh. <laughs> and they had a couple hits. When you say to yourself, you know what the Hansons really need? More, more. grunge and more of them. More hair. <laughs> So, yeah, so I haven't really been to many concerts in my time. So this is like what? Because we went to We the Kings and saw Charles Trippi, and uh, then we went to Portugal the Man, and the opening act was Crystal Fighters, and they were really good. And I was excited because Portugal the Man, you know, is from Portland. Portland, <laughs> Portland. And I love them, and I wanted you to see them. And I think you didn't dislike them, the music you liked, right? No, it was catchy, and I know that you've played them a couple times, like on Spotify or whatever. So I recognize, like, some of their songs, and, like, their little light show on the mountains was pretty cool, but... But it was a jam-packed night, and this was at the end of our night to go see Portugal the Man after, and we'll talk about this in a minute, uh, we went to a haunted house, which was really cool, and but for whatever reason, the haunted house, when we're standing in line, you started, didn't feel well. Yeah, and I don't, I thought it was just like excitedness, because if I get overexcited, and I've been like this my entire life, if I've been too nervous or overexcited, I make myself sick. It's like when I moved here, remember, I was sick when I moved here, right? Oh, yeah. So, and that's just overexcitedness. So, I've always been that way. And so, I don't know if I was just like way too overexcited about the haunted house, but I wasn't feeling well. And then when we went to the venue to see Portugal the Man, I was kind of. Mm. Well, and I didn't even think about this because I don't know anybody who has like basically virgin concert ears. Yes, I've got really sensitive ears. Ears because you can hear. Yes. Um, and like you're you're really tiny teens. Teens. You uh, you you said like the the sound was making your whole body vibrate it was. so like much. My my ribs were just like like the entire time. And people who have been to concerts are used to that. Yeah. And they, but you're just not used to it. Even though because like when you said you're Britney Spears when you're young, she's pretty loud. And I was in the the box, oh. and I was still covering my ears. I've always had really sensitive ears, so... That means you can hear, basically. Yeah, but... <laughs> so, needless to say, the whole, like, vibrating of the rib cage thing wasn't helping with my, like, nausea. Yeah. And then there was... It was really, really packed, and it was really hot, and then everybody started smoking pot. <laughs> and I don't smoke pot. I've never smoked pot. And normally, it doesn't really bother me that much, but... When there's so much of that all around combined with, like, everything else that was happening, I was just like, uh, uh, like... You're very... Like, uh, some people don't even really notice it anymore because they've been to these things. Like me, I don't really even... It's like, oh, yeah, it smells like pot. Oh, yeah, it's really loud. You know, I don't even yeah. think about it. Um, and and I'm so used to it. But I did notice... It's really weird because, like, Crystal Fighters, who are awesome, and what I thought was cool is I tweeted about them while we're at the show yeah and they like favorited my tweet when they were done off stage oh cool that's cool yeah and uh, you know like i love portugal the man because 
a lot of things. I, I, I think their music is great. I had no idea that um, a couple of the guys grew up in Portland because some of them are from Alaska. And, but they listen to my radio show. So I was really like surprised when I actually got to meet them. Oh, yeah. And they would talk and say stuff about, you know, how is so-and-so from the show or something like that. I'm like, wow, you actually remember that? Yeah. So uh, two things was like, it's really cool that a band that I respect and think a lot of even knows I exist from radio. Because usually like bands are like, oh, yeah, that radio D-bag. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like really cool. And also I felt like, oh, my gosh, I'm I'm freaking old <laughs> <laughs> but you got we, you didn't feel well so we ended up leaving but i got to see like so many great songs portugal the man was great i mean even though you didn't feel well they were awesome live. Yeah, i wish that i you know didn't have a 50 pound purse to carry around and hold on to all my stuff and the nauseousness and everything combined i was like oh man like you were, and you were so excited, and I felt really bad that we had to leave early, but... What are you going to do? Next time, I'll bring some Tums. <laughs> That's right. And some earplugs. We have to get earplugs for you. They don't fit in my ears. <laughs> they pop out. Even the spongy kind? Nope. Oh, man. we're not. We're gonna have to have some made. Custom made. Yeah, we'll take you down and just have them drip that wax into your Ew. ear. Ew. <laughs> Well, so we have uh, we did go to the thirteenth floor, which is a professional production uh, Halloween haunted house. It's supposed to be like one of the scariest ones in the country, right? Yes. Um, I, you know, I've been to a lot of these places before. Uh, I I almost psyched myself out from going because I just think like we watch so many scary movies mm-hmm. that <laughs> I thought. What is this going to be like? Like, what am I? What am I getting myself into? What am I doing? Well, and from the corn maze experience, it was like, well, I hope this isn't disappointing because <laughs> it was even more expensive than the stupid corn maze. Anything but... we did, uh, as long as we didn't have to wait in line for two hours and almost die. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I told the story a little bit more detail on the Pants Free podcast with Nick uh, this week. If you want to check that out, because. Uh, yeah, I kind of did a little rant on why do we have to stand in line and yeah, <laughs> for two for $30 hours. $30 in the freezing cold. Oh, man. But this one was great. Um, you get there. It is packed. And it is insane. You uh, get in line and you're in like, you know, like the Disneyland line. It's pretty long. But um, we got there pretty early thanks to Sierra for saying, yeah, we probably should get there early. <laughs> yeah. And so we got there like maybe an hour and a half before the thing was open or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we only had to wait in line like an hour, and if you saw the line by the time we got out there, it was it was around the block. It was worth getting there early yeah. for, that's for sure. But while you're waiting in line, these characters come out, and they'll take pictures of you. We'll post, if you didn't see, if you don't follow us on Twitter at Me Plus Cake, you should check out, there's a picture of uh, Sierra and one of the characters. It's pretty scary. Because his eyes, he's got the contacts yeah, in. Yeah, he was pretty thing. creepy. He was he, one of the creepier ones. He kind of looked like Freddy Krueger in a way. But a little he, bit, yeah. He was supposed like to be like a zombie mechanic or something. Yeah, I know. He was good. I thought it was really well done. And, and he gave us a good deal on our uh, clutch. He did, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> fantastic. Sewn together with real human flesh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sierra and I, we talked about this last week. We did our pumpkin carving. We did. And, uh, well, I did. What, what, what is it? It's not Scully. It's Mike mm-hmm. from uh, Monsters, Mo- Inc. Monsters Inc. And I don't know why. I just saw it on the internet. And I thought, oh, I could do that. And you did uh, a really cool vampire, like a traditional pumpkin. Just a little creature. And we did these on what? Sunday? Yep. We're recording this. This is Thursday. It's like Friday at 1.30 in the morning. We're recording this podcast. Mm-hmm. As usual. These pumpkins are like they're half dead. Already. All right, and, the, and like you want yours even has like a bad tooth. My my the my bottom teeth of mine are eroding away. <laughs> like melted into the pumpkin. This is what happens when you don't floss. Yeah, floss, kids. Yeah. Your your has like a black tooth or something. I don't know what the he's got a hot tooth. He's, oh, I just got a hot tooth. I don't know, I'm I'm fine. I've got a hot tooth. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know. We're, we're gonna. I think we're gonna make more pumpkins on Sunday, right? I think we should. Because well, here's the real reason. We're both addicted to the seeds. I live for the seeds. Do you have a special recipe you use? Um, kind of. Not really, but 
there's like a certain I'm just um, because growing up, my dad always burnt the pumpkin seeds always yeah. every year. And I remember one year I was like, okay, I'm taking over and I just watched them like a hawk because I was like, these are such a yummy treat. We only get them one time a year unless you want to buy like the bagged ones, which are gross. But so I was like, I want to enjoy these. So I just perfected the art of the pumpkin seed cooking and my seasoning specialties. Yeah, so you did. They're they're delicious. I couldn't stop eating them. I think I had a thousand calories worth of pumpkin seeds. Well, my entire three meals for the past like four days were pumpkin seeds. So <laughs> the only thing that I wish, and I think that there was a method on Pinterest or something that I saw, you boil the seeds before you bake them, and that makes the hulls not quite as like holly holly. Yeah, <laughs> so they don't like. So they're a little softer on your palate? Yeah, or? so they don't, like, scrape your oh, intestinal that's, that's the one thing, yeah, that's what I noticed is, like, my esophagus was, like, scraped raw. Yeah, a little bit. And I just end up being, like, and, like, spitting them into, like, a napkin or something because they, like... Oh, you use a napkin? Oh. Well, I, I mean... Because you're classy. There's a couple on the floor here and there, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Bijou's got them already. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she likes them, too. So uh, just, you know, I mean, I'm sure people can find their own pumpkin seed uh, recipe, but uh, maybe you could put it on meplusscake.com. Sure. All right, uh, there you go. <laughs> We did see Carrie, the movie, the remake of uh, Stephen King's movie, Carrie, and (laughs) what? (laughs) Sorry, that just sounded funny to me. Well, he wrote it, Stephen King. Yeah, but you said it was, we saw the movie Carrie, the remake of the movie Carrie. Yes. So it was just a remake. I'm confusing myself. Sorry. It just sounded funny to me. I'm not trying to be mean. All right, well, thanks for joining us for another fine... (laughs) podcast here on me plus cake we always try to confuse you and pull the train over anytime we can uh, uh so uh whatever carrie was good it was good and there's your review <laughs> <laughs> no and today i was actually looking at like the old trailer compared to the new trailer and i was watching some behind the scenes things and i um i thought it was really good i love uh, the girl who played Carrie, her name's Chloe Moretz, Chloe Grace, I think she goes by. And I watched her in a couple interviews and she's only like 15 or something like that. And she's so talented for her age and she's very mature when it comes to interviews. She doesn't say like a thousand times and she knows what she's talking about. And, you know, she has respect for um, Sissy Spacek as her elder character, basically. But anyways, it was really good. And I liked the like couple modern twists that they added in here and there. So the only thing that I thought was like a little bit weird is like their names were so dated. For the, yeah, you didn't for know. modern character. Yeah, like the one of the most popular girls in school is named Sue. Who names a baby Sue anymore? <laughs> yeah. Sue and Billy and Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a little bit Well, Carrie was the girl's name. I mean, that's a little, it seems a little bit more normal though, Carrie. It is, yeah. I feel like that's still a pretty prominent name and the 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 really mean girl's name was chris oh so, yeah chris chrissy or whatever yeah, that, yeah, and, and it, i hated her there's so many points in that movie where i was just like i was getting angry because these people were so mean to her and i just can't believe that that actually happens in real life i think that they should play this movie in schools as like an anti-bullying <sighs> campaign. isn't that the original anti-bullying movie like don't <laughs> with people because they might have telekinesis and kill your ass. Uh, another show we're watching that is fantastic. If you aren't into American Horror Story, you really need to catch up. The uh, first season is on Netflix, and I'm pretty sure that you can get the second season on Apple TV. I'm so, like surprise how into you into the show you ended up getting because you're like a little bit obsessed with it oh yeah and i just kind of was like oh we should watch the show because the new season's coming out and i think you might like it and you really like it oh my god it's amazing um the uh, well first of all the writing is brilliant uh i like the musical aspect of it every part of it is like a classic uh horror movie but not in a bad way they do it so well that um, you actually kind of get uh, creeped out during the show. It's so. just like the right amount of messed up, I feel yeah. like, because... Well, it, it, this last episode, because uh, the new season is The Coven, we're on like the third episode. Yeah. 
Um, and Kathy Bates plays a former slave owner. And she's it, a nasty one. And it's now she is a real person, like the character she's playing. Yeah, is I real. didn't know that. And it is actually the the house that it's based out of, not the house that the the witches live in on the show, but the uh, house that um, Kathy Bates' character is supposed to be the you know the the queen bee over. It was actually a house that um, this that lady lived in. It's supposedly one of the top ten. Most haunted places in the United States. Ugh. Yeah, it's because she did some be- like terrible things to these people. Yeah. Like and when you if you watch this season, like you, I mean, Kathy Bates is such a good actress. Like you, you hate her in this because yeah. she's so nasty. There were some weird scenes, and I don't get what was going on. There was, and and it's particularly different because there is some sexual stuff that goes on on American Horror Story, but this was like. Weird. Two different times too. Like it creeped weird me out. Stuff. Yeah, and with American Horror Story, like they, like I said, like they do the right amount of like messed up to get like in your head. But like this was like probably one of the most like messed up episodes of all the three seasons. For like if sure. you just if you just go on Twitter and do uh, hashtag a a h and or a. H A H H S A H S Coven. Yeah, well, the ones that I saw were just A H S, and so yeah, they use they, both. If you if you look at those hashtags on Twitter, people are like, "What was that? What just happened?" Because <laughs> it was freaky. So yeah, if you haven't watched it yet, you know you definitely should check out American Horror Story. Watch it from the beginning. Both the first two seasons are amazing. I love them both. And the third one is just as great. So I can't say enough things about it. You'd think I was getting paid to promote this show. Seriously. You told me to do... What did you tell me to do in the mirror uh, yesterday? Play Bloody Mary. Yeah, what, okay, so that's a thing. I know I've heard of it, but I've never done it before, and I don't really know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go in the bathroom yep. and say, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Yep. With the lights off. Yes. And then what happens? Well, it's, I mean, it's just a game. It's urban legend, but you're supposed to see her in the mirror. So, should we try it right now? No. Why? Because it freaks me out. I don't like it. Well, you stand on the other side of the door with a microphone, and I'll just go in the bathroom. Okay. All right. All right. So I just say it three times? Yes, and you just stare into the mirror and she's supposed to appear. So, or what bad happens? She could come out and eat your soul. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't have one of those. So oh, well, then you're good. Fine. You're fine. So I'm, I turn off the light. Yep. And then I look in the mirror. Yes. Like, do I get really close to the mirror? No, nope, we just stand like normal space away. Should Nala be in here with me? Yes, she'll protect you. Uh, will she? Yes. Okay, so yeah, you stand like like I am right now, like just, this. Just stand right there, yep. And then just say it. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Okay. So don't say it really fast, though. you got to make it, like, spooky. Do well, you want to be in here with me? No, I don't. Come on. No, I don't. Just do it in here with me. <laughs> Come on. Okay. All right. All right. got to stand there next to me. Okay. So do we? can we say it back and forth? Like or... No, you're saying it because I don't want to... Okay, so we have to look in the mirror. If she comes out and kills your ass, it's your fault. Okay, wait, the curtains, the shower curtains. So. <laughs> All right, so All right, I'm shutting off the light. Oh, God. Ooh. See what you made me do. Oh, God. Ready? Yep. So I look in the mirror and just say it, right? Yep, three times. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. <laughs> Oh, my God.